10 Horrible Death Traps Across the Globe Attention! Potential death traps lurk in our communities. Danger lurks in unexpected places, disguised as homes, workplaces, and even hospitals. These seemingly innocuous structures can harbor hidden perils that can transform them into death traps. Structural damage, incessant construction, hazardous materials, neglected maintenance, and poorly constructed tunnels are just a few of the threats that can turn ordinary buildings into potential disaster zones. In some instances, these hazards have been addressed, but the risk remains in others. Despite the potential dangers posed to occupants and visitors, these structures continue to stand, ticking time bombs waiting to explode. We urge everyone to be vigilant and aware of their surroundings. If you suspect that a building may pose a safety hazard, report it to the appropriate authorities immediately. Remember, your vigilant lives. 1. Structurally Damaged House Structurally Damaged House, a dream home turned nightmare. A retired couple's dream home in Cambridgeshire, England, has turned into a nightmare due to structural damage. The house, which was built just five years ago, has developed ceiling-to-floor length cracks in its interior walls and equally long fissures in its exterior walls. As a result, the house has become so dangerous that the insurers have insisted that it be demolished and completely rebuilt. The house was built on shifting clay that has swelled with water and lifted the house, causing it to become unstable and at risk of collapse. The situation has become so bad that the owners, Madeline and Alastair Price, ages 70 and 69, respectively, say they can't even open the front door, the floors are uneven, and cracks are pretty much everywhere, much everywhere. The Prices are now facing the prospect of having to demolish their dream home and start over. They say it may take two years or more to rebuild the five-bedroom house, which features underfloor heating, a wine chiller, and a wood burner. Even then, the owners are uncertain whether they want to move back into the house, they may sell the rebuilt house instead. This story is a reminder of the importance of having a home inspection done before purchasing a property. A home inspector can identify potential problems with the structure of the house, such as shifting clay, that could lead to serious damage or even collapse. Here are some tips for avoiding buying a structurally damaged home. Hire a qualified home inspector to inspect the property before you buy it. Ask the seller about any known problems with the property. Get a copy of the property's engineering report. Be aware of the signs of structural damage, such as cracks in the walls or floors, uneven doors and windows, and sagging ceilings. If you are concerned about the structural integrity of your home, it is important to have it inspected by a qualified engineer. 2. Breathing Hazard, Residents of Lowswater House in Birmingham Forced to Evacuate Residents of Lowswater House, a high-rise apartment building in Kings Norton, Birmingham, England, are being forced to evacuate due to a number of health hazards, including leaks, mold, structural damage, and difficulty breathing. The problems began following the Grenfell Fire tragedy that occurred in North Kensington, West London, on June 14, 2017. In the aftermath of the fire, the government ordered all high-rise buildings with similar cladding to be retrofitted with sprinklers and have their balconies replaced. The construction work at Lowswater House has been ongoing since 2018 and has a number of problems, including poor air quality. The construction work has created a lot of dust, which has made it difficult for residents to breathe. Safety hazards, broken glass has been found on the hallway floor, and there have been reports of birds being boarded up inside windows. Access problems, a broken elevator has made it difficult for residents to get around the building. In addition to these physical problems, residents say that the construction work has also had a negative impact on their mental health. They are constantly worried about the safety of their homes and families, and they feel like they have no control over their lives. The Birmingham City Council has apologized to residents for the disruption and inconvenience caused by the construction work. Construction work. However, residents say that they are no longer willing to tolerate the problems, and they are demanding to be evacuated from the building. 
The situation at Lowswater House highlights the need for better planning and communication when it comes to major construction projects. Residents should be consulted and involved in the decision-making process, and they should be kept informed of the progress of the work. Additionally, contractors should take steps to minimize the disruption to residents, such as by providing alternative accommodation for those who are most affected by the work. If you are concerned about the safety of your home, you should contact your local council or housing association. You can also find more information about your rights as a tenant on the website of the Citizens Advice Bureau. 3. House of Horrors Imran Hussein, the Labour Member of Parliament for Bradford East, has condemned the state of Warren House, an apartment high-rise in Idol, Bradford, England, labeling it a house of horrors and a death trap for its tenants. The building has been plagued by a combination of poor maintenance and neglect, leaving residents to endure a range of hazardous living conditions. Hussein has called upon the chief executive of In Communities, a social housing provider in the Bradford district, to address the building's serious failings. He has also urged the housing minister to take action against social landlords who allow their properties to fall into such disrepair. The litany of issues at Warren House includes Damp and mold, the building is riddled with damp and mold, which can cause respiratory problems and other health issues. Out of order elevators, the elevators in the building are frequently out of order, making it difficult for residents to access their homes, especially those with mobility impairments. Poor water supplies, residents have suffered from residents have suffered from poor water supplies for five years, with some having to go without hot water for extended periods. Unsafe railings, safety railings on walkways and stairs are partially missing and rusty, creating a significant fall hazard. Several residents have fallen and been injured, with one woman suffering a brain bleed as a result. Leaky roofs, leaky roofs allow water to enter the building, causing further damp and mold problems. These are just a few of the many issues that have made Warren House a nightmare for its tenants. Hussein's condemnation of the building is a stark reminder of the responsibility that social landlords have to provide their tenants with safe and habitable accommodation. The situation at Warren House highlights the urgent need for better regulation of social housing. Social landlords must be held accountable for the condition of their properties, and tenants must have a voice in raising concerns and ensuring that their needs are met. 4. Cranley House, Fire Risk Assessor Negligence Endangers Residents Charles Morgan, a fire risk assessor, was found guilty of negligence for failing to identify and report serious fire safety defects in Cranley House, a 24-apartment complex in Southampton, England. The defects, which included holes in the walls between flats and a lack of insulation, could have helped a fire to spread and put residents' lives at risk. The prosecution, representing the Hampshire Fire and Rescue Service, described Cranley House as a death trap due to the potential for a fire to spread quickly and easily. The court was also told that the building's fire alarm control panel could be tampered with, further compounding the danger to residents. Despite Morgan's defense, Judge Gary Burrell found him guilty of two counts of failing to carry out a fire risk assessment that was suitable and sufficient. Morgan was, sent Morgan was sentenced to three months in jail for each offense, but the sentence was suspended for 18 months. He was also fined £2,750 and ordered to pay costs of £19,952. UK Fire Consulting Ltd, the company for which Morgan worked, was also fined £20,000 and ordered to pay costs of £19,952. Morgan has lost his position with the company and has been barred from working again as a fire risk assessor. His negligence put the lives of Cranley House residents at risk, and his conviction serves as a reminder of the importance of fire safety. Key Takeaways from this case Fire risk assessors have a responsibility to carefully inspect buildings and identify all potential fire hazards. Failing to identify and report fire hazards can have serious consequences, including injury or death. Fire safety is paramount, and property owners and managers must take all necessary steps to protect their occupants. 5. 
alarming residence. Landlord Paul Etienne, residing in his distressing residence on Headstone Drive, Harrow, England, neglected court directives twice, which mandated the rectification of safety hazards in his property. One such peril involved the use of a single electrical outlet, connected through extension, cords to power space heaters, televisions, a music system, and lamps simultaneously. Furthermore, tenants had limited access to faulty electrical wiring, and a sizable window secured the tent, posing additional risks. Etienne claimed that pandemic-related challenges and income losses hindered him from carrying out the court-ordered repairs. The judge at Wilsdon Magistrates Court imposed a fine of £3,660 on the landlord. Councillor Anjana Patel, a cabinet member for Environment and Community Safety, pointed out that Etienne, who believed he could act above the law and place tenants in his hazardous property without consequences, had learned otherwise due to the fine he was compelled to pay. This serves as a cautionary tale, emphasizing the importance of vigilance and alerting the public to potential dangers. 6. Siddhikunda Depot Bangladesh businesses need better chemical storage management. A recent assessment of Bangladesh businesses' management of potential risks involving the on-site storage of chemicals has found that procedures are too fragmented and isolated. Professor Saida Sultana Razia of the Department of Chemical Engineering at the Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology conducted the assessment and found that such management needs to be comprehensive and integrated. It also needs to be enforced through a proper regulatory agency. In addition to these recommendations, Professor Razia also called for the following safeguards. A mandatory hazard labeling system. An integrated and verified inventory of chemicals. Provisions for firefighters safety. Her recommendations follow a massive fire at the city of Chattagram's administrative center's privately run BM container depot in which a series of explosions resulted in the deaths of at least 49 people. Key takeaways from this report. Bangladesh businesses need to improve their management of potential risks involving the on-site storage of chemicals. Chemical storage management need comprehensive, integrated, and enforced through a proper regulatory agency. Additional safeguards, such as a mandatory hazard labeling system, an integrated and verified inventory of chemicals, and provisions for firefighter safety, are also needed. Image of BM Container Depot Fire in Chattagram, Bangladesh The BM Container Depot Fire was a tragedy that could have been prevented if proper safety measures had been in place. The Bangladesh government needs to take action to ensure that businesses are storing chemicals safely and that there is a proper regulatory agency in place to enforce these regulations. 7. UK hospitals face fire safety risks from ACM cladding. A recent investigation has revealed that six out of eight London hospitals either had not removed aluminum composite material, ACM, cladding, the flammable building material related to the Grenfell Tower fire in North Kensington that killed 72 people in 2017, or had no intention of doing so. The other two hospitals, investigators determined, had not yet dealt with plastic foam insulation or construction defects, compromising fire safety. This discovery is particularly concerning given that a discarded cigarette set fire to debris outside the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Glasgow, Scotland, just a month earlier, on September 16. The fire filled the main atrium with smoke and forced the evacuation of staff and patients. Since 2013, there have been at least 4,720 hospital and medical care facility fires in England, resulting in six fatalities and 320 injuries. Despite these alarming statistics, the death toll has not been higher, which raises concerns about the potential for a catastrophic fire. The use of ACM cladding on hospitals is a serious fire safety risk. The Grenfell Tower fire demonstrated that ACM cladding can rapidly spread fire, making it difficult for firefighters to control and putting lives at risk. The government has made some progress in removing ACM cladding from hospitals, but there is still more work to be done. The investigation's findings highlight the need for urgent action to address this issue.
Here are some of the recommendations that have been made to improve fire safety in hospitals. Remove all ACM cladding from hospitals as soon as possible. Install sprinkler systems in all hospitals. Conduct regular fire safety training for all hospital staff. Develop and implement comprehensive fire safety plans. The hospital patients and staff should be a top priority. The government must take all necessary steps to ensure that hospitals are safe from fire hazards. 8. China House China House, a culinary death trap that terrorized Preston. The China House restaurant in Preston, Lancashire, England, was a ticking time bomb that nearly brought disaster to the city in 2013. Emergency services and health and safety personnel labeled the eatery a death trap after discovering a shocking disregard for safety regulations. Experts warned that the restaurant's haphazard storage of gas bottles in the cellar next to faulty electrical wiring posed a catastrophic risk. An explosion could have leveled blocks of residences and other buildings, resulting in multiple fatalities. The blast would have also disrupted the West Coast Mainline Railway, causing millions of pounds in financial losses due to suspended services. China House's history of safety negligence was well documented. In 2009, the restaurant's license was revoked due to its, bl due to its blatant disregard for fire safety regulations. The establishment was further marred by a fire in July 2018. Despite attempts to sell the property in 2014, China House remained vacant, with no buyers interested in the hazardous structure. The initial asking price of £400,000 was slashed in half a year later, but even this drastic reduction failed to attract any potential buyers. China House's legacy is one of recklessness and disregard for public safety. Its original incarnation as a Matthew Brown alehouse and subsequent transformation into a Banks Brewery location were marked by a similar cavalier attitude towards safety. In 1875, the building, then operating as a pub, experienced an explosion, highlighting the inherent dangers associated with the property. The derelict structure, a stark reminder of China House's troubled past, is finally scheduled for decision, with plans for its site's redevelopment. The restaurant's owner, facing the consequences of his negligence, received a suspended prison sentence and 200 hours of community service. The China House saga serves as a cautionary tale, emphasizing the importance of prioritizing safety and adhering to regulations to prevent similar disasters from unfolding. 9. Tunnel's Entrepreneur's Dream Turns Into Tunnel of Death as an aspiring entrepreneur, 21-year-old Askia Kafra was eager to secure the funding he needed to start his own business. He saw an opportunity when he crossed paths with Daniel Beckwith, a Bitcoin multimillionaire with a penchant for eccentricity. Little did Kafra know that his quest for financial backing would lead him down a dark and dangerous path. Beckwith had a secret project in the works, one that required the digging of an extensive network of tunnels beneath his home Lake Anna, Virginia. Kafra, hoping to earn Beckwith's favor and secure the coveted funding, agreed to take on this clandestine task. For days, Kafra toiled away underground, eating, sleeping, and watching television in makeshift accommodations between shifts of digging. Beckwith, maintaining a veil of secrecy, would blindfold Kafra during each trip to the worksite. Kafra's time as Beckwith's laborer came to an abrupt and tragic end when a fire erupted in the tunnels beneath the house. As the flames spread, Kafra, stripped naked for cleaning after a work session, found himself trapped in the labyrinthine network of underground passages. An investigation revealed that the fire, likely ignited by a daisy chain of extension cords running through the tunnels, had been caused by Beckwith's hoarding habits. The house was filled to the brim with piles of garbage and discarded items, creating a maze-like environment that obstructed Kafra's escape. Firefighters battled the blaze, but it was too late for Kafra. His lifeless body was found in the basement, near an opening to the tunnel's Beckwith, initially facing charges of second-degree murder and manslaughter, was sentenced to nine years in prison. However, the murder charge was overturned on appeal, and he was resentenced to ten years, with all but five years suspended. 
The Coffer tragedy serves as a stark reminder of the dangers of working in unregulated and hazardous environments. It also highlights the importance of thorough investigations and accountability when such incidents occur. 10. Brooklyn Apartment Building Brooklyn landlord sentenced to live in his own slumlord apartment. Morris Gross, a 77-year-old landlord in Brooklyn, New York, faced a unique punishment for failing to maintain his property's inhabitable condition. Instead of jail time, he was sentenced to reside in one of his own dilapidated apartments for 15 days, experiencing firsthand the conditions that his tenants had endured for years. Gross, who owned two apartment buildings in Brooklyn, had accumulated over 1,900 violations for various building code infractions. Despite repeated warnings and court orders, he had neglected to address these issues, leaving his tenants to suffer in squalor. As part of his sentence, Gross was forced to occupy apartment in his Sterling Street building, where he encountered leaky pipes, cold rooms, bold mice, and falling plaster, the same conditions that his tenants had been living with. To ensure he didn't flee the premises, Gross was fitted with an electronic ankle bracelet. Before moving in, Gross attempted to make his temporary abode more comfortable. He ordered renovations including new plaster and paint, a kitchen floor, a couch, a chair, and a radiator. However, these improvements were a stark contrast to the neglected state of his tenants' apartments. In addition to the 15-day residency, Gross was fined $32,000 for contempt of court and ordered to pay $137,900 in civil penalties. However, if he completed his sentence, he would be allowed to use the civil penalty funds for building repairs. While Gross's punishment may seem unusual, it highlights the severity of his, of his offenses and the impact of his negligence on his tenants' lives. His case serves as a reminder to landlords of their responsibility to provide safe and habitable housing for